Hello and welcome to the lecture on introduction to database and SQL. So let's understand what is database, what is the purpose of it, you know, what you do in database and then we'll understand what is SQL and then we'll understand what are the types of databases that we have in the market. Alright, so we'll cover these three topics to understand what are the database, what is SQL and what, is, and what are the different types of databases we have. Let's understand what is a database. A database is a structured way of storing the data, right? If you want to store data in a structured manner, which can later be easily searched, managed and updated. This is the key thing of a database. And you can even store the data in a file. So what is the difference between storing the data in a database and storing the data in a file? The most important thing is it, the data in the database is stored in a structured way. Okay, there's a logic to it. How do you store the data in a database? And the main purpose of why it is stored in a structured way is three things. First, it can be searched easily searched and figure out where is your data then easily managed scale up and down and easily updated means you can upgrade the database you know you can go to a higher level when the increase of the data goes higher and higher so the, this basically you need a database to store the information in a structured way right data can also be stored in a file format right but it's difficult to maintain you know difficult to search difficult to manage and difficult to update as well so that's why when you have a small files like you know 10 kb 5 kb those kind of files you store in the file but when you have huge like gbs of data you store in a database and there are database softwares available right which help to store the data in such a way that can it retrieve faster even database software has capability to hold large amount of data so understand this when you have large amount of data for your company where do you store it? You store it in a database. And why do you store it? Because for it to easily searched, managed and updated. Why don't you store in a file? Because file cannot be easily searched, managed and updated. It's very difficult to maintain a file rather than maintain a database. Okay. So that is why you need a database to store the data in a structured way. And how data are stored in a database? Data in a database stored in something called a stable. Okay, if you're hearing table for the first time, table will have data organized in row and column format. So whenever someone say it, this is a table, table means a data is organized in rows and also in columns. The simple explanation of a table looks like you have this first row that has columns, right? It has three column ID, subject and marks. ID is basically one column. Subject is one column, marks is one column. Then you have different rows in it. First row is the name of that column. It's called as header or it could also be called as a fields. Okay. From the second row onwards, it's all your data in the table. All right. So if you want to store uh, student marks information, you have something called as columns, column names. Then you have your data in it. Okay. So the table name is marks and id subject marks are called as columns and the value on each line are called as rows we have rows as a data and then you have columns then you have name of each of the data stored in the table all right so what is a table table basically is help to organize the data in a row and a column and each database has multiple tables okay so database you can say is a collection of tables and table is a collection of data so understand this how the database table and how the data in the table is been stored okay then next is the what is relational database okay when you have two tables let's say you have a marks table and a student table they have a same column called as id right the id of a student is let's say 101201 is the reference number of that student could be a you know the student registration number or student id and you can assign this id to any of the other tables to create a relation between them so whenever i want to say okay john 101 what is the marks then i go to another table then i can find the reference key of that same particular student and say the marks is 87 for john okay this is called as relational database wherein you create a relation between the two tables with the same one column okay and this is also called as foreign key the primary key in student is id in the marks the prime the foreign key is called as reference key for the student table all right it's very simple to understand sql stands for structured query language okay you are this is basically a language and it's a query language it means you do a query onto a database to get the data right it's a language to access the data in the database 
So now that you have your massive data that is stored in the database as a table, right? Now you need some language to access them. We say when you store data in a database, it can easily be searched. So what is the language that you will use to search the data in the database? And that language is called as structured query language. Because say short forms, people tend to say SQL or they will also call a SQL. So SQL or SQL both means SQL is structured query language. Okay. SQL has predefined keywords that you can do the following things, right? What you can do from a data in a database, you can create the table, delete the table, search the table, insert the rows, update the rows, delete the rows. You know, with this language, you can do all these operations on the data in a database, right? So instead of just not creating, but you can do search, you can update the records, you can delete the records, you can even delete the table as well. You can say drop table and table name and the table will be deleted right so this is basically a language that you have to learn in order to interact with the database because without even knowing how the sql works you will not be able to issue a command to get the record or could be deleting some record or updating the data in the database all right so you have to learn sql that is sql and every database that we're going to see in just a minute have different way of interpreting them but in terms of keywords Let's say select for selecting a record, update for updating a record, insert and inserting a record, they all going to be the same. So SQL is going to be the same, but how they implement it in their own database might be vary. All right. So some of the usages of a database, let's look at them. So instead of storing the data in a files and access them, all data is stored in database that we understood here. And some of the things that you can store in the database is your user information, product information, your product pricing, your orders, invoice, inquire, contacts, anything you can store in the database. So instead of storing them in a file, you typically store them in a database. So when you have this data stored in a database and also you have given this SQL to access them, it's really easy to work with data in databases. All right. So upcoming sections, we will be focusing more on, you know, how to access the database, how to issue this command, how to insert the records. Then we'll go and jump into PHP and then we'll see from PHP, how can you access this database and then how can you issue the command to do the same job with the PHP code as well. Okay, so you have to first understand what is database, what is the purpose of the database and why we have to use database and how the database have tables and how the table looks like and what is SQL and what is SQL and how the commands look like and how these commands work to retrieve the data or do some kind of operation on the data. All right. So once you are clear with this concept, right, once you're clear with this concept of what is database, how data are stored in a database, what is a table, what is columns and rows, then what is a relation database and also what is SQL and then what is the usage of database. So if you know these things, that's what we discussed just now, if you know these things, then you're ready for to work with databases because you're clear what you're trying to do your the data is stored in database and then you're trying to issue some command to fetch those records okay not just fetching you can update insert delete you can do all sorts of operation on the database okay so i'll show you a couple of database vendors so this basically first vendor is called as oracle so if you're working for a project you might be hearing oracle database okay and these are the basically a vendor who give you a database where you can use the database to store the data. So first one is Oracle. Second one is Microsoft has SQL server. There are plenty of database available. I've given you some of the database that's commonly been used. And then you have the MySQL database. So in this course, we will be looking at MySQL. Okay. And then we will look at how to log in into the database, how to create a table, how to create a database, how to create and add the data into the database. All right. Understand that you have different databases available in the market, right? If when you work on projects, you sometimes in one project, you'll be working on MySQL and sometimes you'll be working on Oracle. The reason behind that, that company has already purchased the license for this database to store the data. Okay. When you go back to PHP, when we go to that section of PHP, we'll show you how do you connect to these databases and how you issue those commands and fetch records or update records from these databases. All right. So that's all about introduction to database and SQL. In the next section, we'll deep down into what is MySQL and then we'll look at some of the features of it. All right. So that's all for this lecture on database and SQL and I'll see you in the next one.